there will never, never, never be blood shedding again. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Everything is fine. There will never, never, never be blood shedding again. <laughs> so this is my load shedding buster system. So I got a inverter just from an automotive shop, 400 watt, something like that. Not sure if it's really up to that. And it's got an ammeter. I still want to install a voltmeter. And this is all mounted on a plank, so it's fairly portable with a plug. And then you connect up to a battery. This is old UPS batteries. They used to be in series. So to produce 24 volts, so I put them in parallel. Um, you charge these up with a normal car charger and then when you connect up you normally get a bit of a spark so don't get too too worried the system gets switched on on its switch over here show you in a moment how that works so you also need to make up a plug like this to plumb into your house system so this is a normal plug which you plug into your plug board the other side is an old light bulb which I have ripped apart and then just connected the wires into there. Just be very careful not to have this lay around the house because this is fairly dangerous because if a kid plugs this into a wall socket um, then this is live and there's 220 between those points. So when you plug this in as well make sure you first screw that in before plugging in and switching on. So when the power goes off, I set up the system just near a light fitting. You'll see in a moment. So the first thing to do is to connect up this plug. Remove the okay, remove the lamp. And screw this into the The other side you can plug into the plug board but don't switch it on yet and also don't switch on the inverter yet. So the next thing is you switch off everything on the main board except for the light circuits. So the light circuits got to stay on. So now it is safe to switch on your inverter and you can also switch through the power onto that light bulb. These are two lamps working together, so the moment you do it, one light comes on already. What you also need to do now is switch on that light circuit. So now the whole house circuit is live. The lighting circuit of the house at least. So the nice thing now is you can switch on any lights in the house, as long as they don't exceed the 400 watt. But you can switch lights on and off throughout the house. The whole house circuit is alive as if it's working. So all the lamps in the house were changed to be either compact fluorescent or LED. And in that way, you can run a good deal of the lights in the house all at once. The only drawback of this system is that when the power comes back, because your main board is off now, you cannot tell that the power is back. So I still want to arrange a alarm of some sort that comes on when the main comes back to warn me that the power has come back. So as soon as the mains comes back, you can switch off your inverter, unplug here, replace the bulb, and on the main board, you can switch everything back on. So the system is powerful enough to actually draw a TV and a decoder. So if we want to watch TV, I've rearranged the plugs such that only the decoder and the TV is on one plug. So then I can easily plug that into our board and, um, and then run, run the TV and the decoder of the system and for and with that we can probably watch about 
again an hour and a half or so um, without adding extra light what I have done is I've got an extra battery which I then can connect in in parallel with this one if I need a bit more power and then if we want to add a light we can we can probably watch TV for about two hours or so until the power is back and there's my homemade charger and that I charge the system up with once the power is back so modern LED TVs don't use a lot of power and so you get away with running that just straight off the inverter to keep the Wi-Fi router going while the power is off I took its power lead and spliced a negative and a positive into it and this I just took to a battery so the battery is being charged while the power is on but it's not ideal because the router supply gives exactly 12 volts and the fully charged battery is 13 and a half volts so I need to just top it up every so often but this takes us through about an hour, hour and a half into load shedding 